we share something quicker. When I was sharing about altars, okay, because uh, we are praying today, we're continuing, just want to pray about the altar of fire. I did mention that on these altars, the Bible speaks about, we do have the altar of praise. You remember? Do you remember the altar of praise? There is what we call the altar of praise. I told you before, an altar can be built, not with your hands. An altar can be built spiritually. What you do or what somebody did can become an altar. An altar becomes a platform where a spirit, evil spirit, or God can work on. So if there is a platform that has been built, it, it is called an altar. So if an evil spirit comes and destroys you, it is because there's already an existing altar. You are there, right? So altars becomes platforms. In the same manner, for God to do certain things, there must be a platform. This is very important because even Jesus Christ, we'll see that later on, even Jesus Christ, whatever we are today, it is because Jesus Christ came and he did something and became a platform. So whether you are healed, whether you are saved, Everything is coming from that altar that Jesus was slain on the Calvary. I'm talking to somebody right here, right? So there's nothing spiritual that can work without a platform. So there must be a platform. Even demons can't touch you. This is why demons can stay in blood. They love being in blood. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? They love being in blood in animals. They love being blood. They can stay in water. They need a platform. When Jesus commanded demons to come out, remember when Jesus was going to the other side, the Bible says that he had a strong wind. I'm talking to you, right? Only when he just stepped on the other side, the first thing he met was a legion. A spirit. And the spirit said, do not cast out this man out of this town. Other version says, do not command us out of this country. I thought Jesus was dealing with a demon in a human being. But the demon was not a demon in a human being. It was a country demon. I'm talking to somebody, right? It was a what? A country demon. It says, do not cast us out of this country. Imagine the demon that destroys people in the country is in a human being, in one person. And the Bible says, nobody could bind him. And Jesus, looking at the spirit, the spirit said, please, at least, they don't. So Jesus commanded them to go into pigs. So at least in pigs. When they entered in pigs, what was their direction? Why? Because they were water spirits. They were monitoring the country. They didn't want Jesus to come in the country. That's why they sent a storm on the water. Jesus had a storm on the water. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. What was about to Kill Jesus. What was about to wreck Jesus? Jesus said, oh, where, is, where you, you were trying to stop me, I will send you there. Now, so I, I want you to see this. There must be what? A platform. So these demons were operating on a platform. That even Jesus, when he was coming into that country, the Bible says he had problems. So can you imagine some of you, you are wondering why you are failing to achieve certain things. You are facing some wins and resistances because there's a platform against you. 
It is a platform in the realms of the spirit that has been set for years, for generations. I'm telling you something, right? It's like asthma. Asthma cannot just attack any person. It must have a history in the blood. I'm talking to somebody here. Same thing with the, with the skin infections. Skin problems. Most of skin problems are inherited. You can't be born with a problem on your skin just like that. There must be a trait. Do you understand? So spirits operate on platforms. God operates on a platform. There is no way Abraham will have a child who God will have no connection with. Because he's God who operates on platforms. Hello? So he's God of Abraham. He's God of Abraham's son Isaac. And he's God of Isaac's son Jacob. And he's God of Jacob's generation Israel. So there must be a platform. This is why God, when he sees you, when you are saved, he connects you. He knows, I know physically your father is this man. But the platform is wrong. Then God gives you spiritual parents. So when I'm standing here, spiritually, I'm not connected to my biological father. I am a son of a prophet. I'm a son of a prophet of an angel. Spiritually. Uh, I think, I think you're, you're, you're too... You're, you're too. <laughs> so I, just that knowledge, because most sons and daughters, they just sit with their mouth they're like, ah, pa Papa, hey, my father's a major one. But do you, do you have that in knowledge? Because that knowledge will help you. It disconnects you from any bloodline case, from any bloodline, whatever. You are not part of that generation. So God, when he saw you, he had to establish a platform. He had to. So he said, now I'm going to give you a father. Then God again. Why? Because God understands spiritual altars. He knows platforms that you cannot operate from that platform where you are coming from. You can't. So God says, even me, how can I operate from the platform of my father? I can't. I stand here and I'm, like, I'm standing on the altar of Mr. Bushiri. Ah. I want to die young or what? Do I know the platforms that he's coming from? Strongholds. Strongholds. I can't. So spiritually, God has to connect me to a platform. So when I stand here like this, and I say, son of, of emeritus, son of prophet with angel, I'm not a son of a just a man. Some, I'm a son of a prophet. I'm a son of a prophet. So I have a platform. So this is a spiritual platform because God introduces himself to fathers. So he says, I am a God of your fathers, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. So when the people of Israel are in trouble, what were they doing? They were calling the God of their father, of their platform. So God has to establish a platform. He cannot just function. He needs a platform. Somebody say a platform. There is a thing that the devil is fighting now. Is that so you see, no, no people, no, 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 no people will fight just a normal man of God. They will fight men of God who are fathers. Because the devil has to disconnect. But it's too late and it can't work. Because in the book of Marak, there is a prophecy. 
I shall turn the hearts of children to their fathers and the hearts of fathers to their children. God said, I what? In Malachi 4 verse 6, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to who? To their fathers. So, no matter how media, whosoever can do it, it won't happen because the Bible says God in the last days, he shall change things. He will turn the hearts of children. They begin to look for their father. I need my spiritual father. Because God has to establish a what? A platform. So when we speak of altars, we speak of platforms. Mm, so I'm hearing you, prophet. So if you have no platform, you have no altar. So there are four altars of Abraham and one altar of Israel. I, I, I want you to hear this. <laughs> Making them five. Which becomes the five altars of every believer. Because every believer is connected to Abraham. The Bible says through faith we are the descendants of Abraham. And the Bible says we have been engrafted as an olive tree to Israel. So there are five altars. There's an altar of praise. You need to have a platform of praise. An altar is an exalted place where the spirit, the spirit is activated and can function properly. Without a hindrance, be it godly or demonic. That's why you must be very careful. So you can raise an altar of praise. Some is an altar of praise. An altar of praise. In the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 7, the first altar that Abraham built was an altar of praise. It's an altar of praise. Are you following or you, you went home? You hear? It's an altar of praise. So what is this altar? So many people don't even understand it. You have no altar of praise. An altar is a platform. If you see somebody failing to worship God alone, when you're at home, you can't worship God properly. In fact, there are very few of you we can worship at home. The only place you can actually feel like worshiping alone is at the church. Because in the church, there is an altar already of praise. So you, you just saw along with the church, what? Altar. When I'm ministering here and we're worshiping, you worship along. Because we already have an, an, an altar of praise. But alone you, alone on your own in your house. Start it, do it, start do it. Father, in the name of, I want to thank you. Before you know it, you have changed. Lord, I'm begging you. Lord, answer my prayer. Do you know why? You do not have an altar of praise. You have not built an altar of praise. You cannot enjoy it. It's just so difficult to enjoy the altar of praise. So you need to know how you can actually build an altar of praise. Some is an altar of praise. Let me quickly show you something that is very important. Let's go into the Bible. And quickly, let's go to Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Do, do, you, know, do, you, do you now know where the word sacrifice is coming from? After sharing with you, 
we know where, where, what was the altar used for? Come on, somebody answer my question. What was the altar used for? For sacrifice. Now, Paul, having understood the altar of praise, knowing that there is an altar, he says, now, let us what? Give a sacrifice of praise. But you cannot give a sacrifice without what? An altar. So Paul knows what he's talking about. He knows in his thinking, he knows and he's thinking that you where you are, you have an altar of praise. He says, since you have it, therefore let us now what? Give that sacrifice. He's wondering. People have it, but they're not using it. He says, hey, hey, let me tell you what this sacrifice is. He says, it's not an animal. He says, it's our lips. Let's open them with thanksgiving. Oh, come on, somebody, I'm hearing you, prophet. So simple. So you can actually raise an altar in your house. Early in the morning tomorrow, you can wake up in the morning and build up an altar just to worship God with your lips, to thank him for who he is. Somebody say, raise an altar of praise. Say it again. I raise an altar of praise. I raise an altar of praise. On that same scripture, it says, how do we do it? It says continually. <laughs> he says continually. Not you do it this month and then you do it again after two months. Continually. An altar of praise. Every believer must have this altar. Every believer must have this altar. The second order he built was the altar of prayer. Remember? And the Bible says, and he built in verse 8, the Bible says of Genesis 12, the Bible says, where was it built? And he removed from hence unto a mountain of the east of Bethel and pinched his tent having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And did what? Called upon the name of the Lord. Prayer. Let me read again. Just read again. And he removed from hence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pinched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and high on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. The second altar he built was the altar of prayer. Of prayer. prayer. Now let's see there. The word I there is supposed to be high. Okay? So... Ha, in Hebrew, it's called high. The word high means a heap of rooms. A what? A building that has collapsed. So a heap is it's called what in Hebrew? It's called what? I just want you to hear this. It's called high. Ha. There is no H. Like ha. Mm -mm. It's ha. And the J doesn't exist in Hebrew. But why? So we say Yeshua. Joshua. In English, Joshua. Are you, are you following? Okay. All right. So, high means what? A heap of rooms. And the word Bethel means the house of God. Now, the Bible says the man went into the middle. And I want you to say something that is very important. I want you to say something here that is very important. This land that, that Abraham is... God has promised to give it to him. 
But the man, before he has possessed the land, he builds an altar of praise. And he builds an altar of prayer. And God says, I will give it to you. But remember, there are Canaanites that he found there. And they were cruel people. And God says, I shall give this land to you. I was imagining, can you imagine how many of you, God has promised you things? How many of you, you have a future that God has promised? But what altar have you built? God is even showing you like, you know, I'll give you this land. It was not his yet. There were Canaanites there. But God says, I'll give you. But the man, he did the two things first. One, he built an altar of praise. No matter what he's facing, he would go back to worship God on the altar. Number two, he built an altar of prayer. And he built it in the middle of High and Bethel. The word Bethel means the house of God. And High means the this distracted place. Something has collapsed. In the middle, he went there and built an altar of prayer. Put your hands for the Lord once again. <laughs> Remember what I'm sharing with you, right? That these two places are very important. Bethel and Hai. And Abraham, before going to Egypt, he goes into Canaan. Where God told him, he said, I will give you this land, it shall be yours. Remember that part, right? God says, I will give you. You know, I have somebody in this room who actually may have a promise. Can you imagine, God has promised you, I will give you this, I will give you this, I will give you this. And Abraham goes there. God says, leave your father, your mom, and your country to a place I will show you. And he goes in that place and he finds Canaanites. Every way. Yeah. But God, you said you're going to give me. There is a, even a king. And I've got military. But God, you said that you're going to give me. The man never bothered. He only did two things. He built two altars. Do you understand? The altar of praise and an altar of prayer. Somebody said, I'm building my own altars. It doesn't matter. If God promises you, as long as you have a platform, you will get it. You will get it. So the Bible says he built two altars. When he built these two, he now went to Egypt with his wife. When the king of Egypt wanted to take his wife and we know the whole story. That eventually, then, there, God punished the king. And the king says, no, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I want to take your wife. Take your wife. And the Bible says God blessed Abraham with the silver, with the gold, with the cattle, with the livestock, with everything, with his servants. He became a, a very wealthy man. And the Bible says he went back. To the same place with all his riches. He went back to the altar. Oh, you didn't hear this. He went back to the altar of prayer. This is how a life of a believer must be. No matter how they, you get money, you get gold, you get worth. Go back. And the Bible says there he built another one. Which is number three. An altar of what? An altar of peace. 